we'll get this fixed in one second. As soon as we can adjust my viewing, I will fix it. Ow. Okay, let's just fix this. Ba -ba. Let's go. Fix. Fix. Sound like my fingers. Alright, here we go. Put you here for a second and hopefully this is good. Maybe I have to move stuff. Just give me one second. Alright, there whoa, there we go. Okay. Good morning guys. Um this is somewhat of a uh coffee chat information type whatever. It's a requested ow, a requested video. Um with regards to um, what you put in your bath bombs, bubble bars, etc., what ingredients. And this was requested, it's not so much how much as is, I'm assuming it means what are the ingredients you put in and maybe why. Um, I'm gonna, you're gonna have to excuse me today. I am not feeling a hundred percent for a few reasons. Uh, I will explain the one reason. You guys know we live in a townhouse, and our our units are all separated by a concrete wall, which is like right there. And we are in, there's 12 units. We are in unit 6, so we are smack dab in the middle. Which is a bonus for in the summer when it's hot, or in the winter when it's cold, because we sort of absorb the heat and the coolness from, you know, adjoining neighbors. But, <coughs> the downfall to that is we just recently got new neighbors. And they have uh, two or three kids. I think two boys and a little, little, little one. Well, last night, for I don't know how many hours this went on, banging on my bedroom window. Or my bedroom wall. Right by my head. Right by my head. And I wasn't feeling good to begin with. So, between the banging, uh, the kids screaming that they're monsters, they can't control themselves, whatever, whatever, whatever. I am a wrecked mess. Um, there's more to it than that. Um, those that know me more on a personal note, I have no problem explaining that scenario. Um, but for right now, that's how it stands. I'm sorry, I'm not 100%. But I guess... I will just do my best as best as I can to explain without getting too technical. Um, it's just sort of a... I know there's a lot of people that like... Let's put it this way. I know there's a lot of people that like to make or design or create, say, their own bath bomb recipes. Experienced or not. Everybody, I mean, my, taking this from uh, experience, my sister, for one, which we won't go there. Uh, my sister, for one, thought, ah, let's do some bath bombs, blah, 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 right? And a few other people. It's not as easy as just mixing, mixing, mixing dry and wet and molding, and there's your bath bomb. Uh -huh. They found that out the hard way. It really is not that easy. Some people, it comes to them like a breeze. Um, you guys, you guys, you, bleh, you guys may think that um, about me and my coffee. Um, I can tell you it was not always like that. When I started out making bath bombs, um, I was doing a lot of, uh, like, I tried to get the perfect round ball, which is everybody's goal. And I was having a hell of a time. They would be together nice, whatever, but they would crumble. Or they would have that powdery texture. Or they sink. And I was like, whatever, I like the sinky bombs, no big deal. Um, that whole thing about them floating, I don't even know when that came about. Same with the whole color explosion thing. I, I assume Lush brought that on. Like I said, it wasn't a big, big... Lush was not my big thing, other than their shower gel, Flying Fox, which was like, oh, I love it! And, you know, that's pretty much all I've ever bought from Lush. And you guys have seen I finally got my first Lush bath bomb, thanks to my wonderful friend, Grin. So anyways, on that note, my bath bomb shapes used to be... This was a really popular one, and I had a lot of them. Um, I didn't buy the Christmas ornaments right away. I had a snowballer. Um, I had this other thing that was like three balls together. I guess it was a different type of snowballer, and you would put the mix in and squeeze it. The snowballer semi-worked. It made some gigantic bath bombs. Um, the problem was you had to have a bowl that was extremely full of mix, because the way the snowball maker works 
is you gotta jam it in. It's all, to be honest, it's exactly the same idea as just picture like a gigantic meatballer. They don't come apart, so you have to have a lot of mix so that when you put these two ball half pieces in, when you squeeze, it's got enough mix in there. And everybody knows that that's the biggest issue is if there's not enough mix in that ball, or there's too much mix in that ball, that can make the whole entire difference. So I tried those, and I did manage to do a few. I ended up doing a few halves and stuck them together with the, you know, the butters and whatever. But I found I really like these, and I didn't want to be like, oh, everybody's round bath bombs. I wanted to be different. So I did, you know, my rose creamers. I did butter bombs. I did whatever. Then I went on to this shape, which is, these are both cat food containers. Yes, they've been washed, cleaned, alcohol. So don't anybody go, ugh. Um, this was the one I used quite a bit, either be it this way, but most of the time this way, like I said, because I love that little dent. This little dent right here was great for my icing. And at one point, yes, my icing was sugar, um, meringue, not, um, you know, like the icing sugar. And it really sucked because literally I was going through probably for one batch, two big bags of icing sugar, two kilogram, two two kilogram bags for a batch this stuff was a waste you'd throw it out it didn't do anything in your bath it wasn't like a sugar scrub or anything like that people do that now which is really cool but i've always been striving for that you know it was a melt and pour top and then it was the bubble top and i i that's my that was my big thing and of course the perfect bomb i still don't think my bombs are perfect there's lots of things i'd like to do but that's a whole other story so I guess basically what I will do is just tell you what you put in your bath bombs or what you can put in your bath bombs, what I put in my bath bombs, what you guys can put in your bath bombs, and I guess what they do. So first off, she wanted me to show you, but everybody knows what baking soda looks like. I'm not going to bring my big bucket, okay? So baking soda, number one ingredient, and citric acid, two main ingredients. You have got to have those two ingredients for your bath bomb to have any kind of reaction. It'll fizz. Okay, you have, if you were doing a basic, basic, it would be citric. And I'm talking total basic. Nothing good for your body, just the smell. You would have the citric, the soda, your fragrance, and something to stick it together. Now, some people's idea of, of a binder is different than what my idea of a binder is. I've heard from a lot of people, their idea of a binder is the the excess of like what you would throw in like starch or whatever that to me is not a binder that's a filler or a additional ingredient in your bomb uh to me a binder would be your witch hazel um your rubbing alcohol whatever the wetting agent is to to give your bomb dampness and structure okay and it can oh here they are banging again if you guys hear that i'm sorry um so it could even be a, a, a melted butter that could be your binder. Something that solidifies and makes this powder a solid, okay? So that's a basic bomb. And we, we still do that for um, bath bomb embeds. And you guys, I mean, I've showed you. I can show you another one. But you guys, oh, that's my soap embeds. You guys know what a bath bomb embed is. It's those little pieces, like, it could even be leftover chunks of bath bomb. But it's those little pieces that you put in that give your bath bomb color. And usually they're made basic. You can do those different, but I'll get onto that after. So, bath bombs. So that's a basic, okay? If you wanted that to be a semi-moisturizing bath bomb with just mostly a smell, but not too elaborate, wouldn't cost a heck of a lot of money to make, you would add a tiny bit of oil to that. And now I've heard people use olive oil, um, uh, grapeseed. There's so many different oils, whatever they pick. Um... Olive oil was a big one, but you have to remember this. Olive oil and some of those other oils are very, um, I want to say comedetic. I can't say the word, so it's chloropot. A pop. <laughs> Hold that. <laughs> Wake up, Danny. They're very heavy oils, even though people say, oh, you know, you olive oil is a heavy oil. Believe it or not, it's a heavy oil. You can buy virgin, you can buy whatever, but it's a it's a poor clogging oil is what I'm trying to say. Not what I would call a good thing for a bath bomb. Makes your tub slippery too, that's another one. But that would be a basic bath bomb. You would have those, you would have your citric, your soda, your little bit of oil, smell, 
and then something stick it together. And then, of course, you can get fancy with the colors. There's, you know, you can use your micas and whatever. I will show you some of those after. Um, other ingredients you can put in your bath bomb um, would be cornstarch. Doesn't have to be cornstarch. You can use arrowroot. And there's a lot of people that think cornstarch is a waste of an ingredient, a waste of a space, and it makes your bombs cheaper to make. Well, I hate to tell you this, this is completely opposite. Cornstarch, believe it or not, is extremely good for your skin. Uh, you talk to any athlete, uh, doctor, you check out those creams for rashes, for whatever, itchy chafing, psoriasis, the whole bit, cornstarch. Cornstarch absorbs moisture when it comes to your skin. Leaves your skin silky soft. Um, it does have properties. The only downfall with this is, uh, is that if you were to say heavily overload your bath bomb with it, you'll end up with a pile of um, undissolved powder in your tub. That's where the amounts and ratios really do, really do come in handy. The knowledge of how much to put into a bomb, okay? And that's something you guys would probably have to figure out yourself. Me personally. I normally do not add any more. The maximum is usually a, a third cup. Normally, it's a quarter cup, which you see is tinier than that. So when you guys see me doing this little scoopy thing, it's not a big scoopy thing. It looks like it. It's not. This would maybe be uh, in between. I'd say it's in between a quarter cup um, and a third cup. Because I've actually taken this scoop and dumped it into my cup, and it does not fill up a quarter cup. Or a... Uh, a third cup so that's that um, another thing so I said you could use cornstarch or arrowroot uh, another thing that you can add would be cream of tartar and I will just show you that okay cream of tartar uh, INCIN name is potassium bitterate do not get it confused with tartaric acid there are some um, suppliers that will advertise cream of tartar um like as an ingredient cream of tartar which is actually tartaric acid it does work in your bath bombs but it's extremely expensive um the way i would describe it would be like having to not add as much citric acid probably you could get away with actually doing baking soda and tartaric acid because it's the same idea it's got the texture of lemon salt um, I would suspect or expect you guys to research that one a bit more. If I've ever used it, I've done it in a couple of, or a couple of products like my bath bombs. Uh, I do a pinch, like a like a tablespoon, if I did it. But that's my more higher up different bombs, and I will explain that later if anybody wants to ask. So cream of tartar, what it does besides being, um, it's good for your skin. Same sort of idea as the starch makes your bombs harder uh i've been experiment experimenting with it for quite a bit it actually improves the performance of your bath bomb so if it's just a basic bath bomb it still fizzes better and boogies are in the tub better and if you have a foaming bath bomb which i'll talk about in one second too it improves that as well but it's also good for your skin but you don't have to use cream of tartar you can use a clay. I used to always use a clay. This is what I always used to use. Um, I had white. This is just normal kaolin clay. It's sort of got a gray hue to it. But you can buy white kaolin clays. There's pink clay. Like I mean, there's a ton of different clays. This basically, same idea. Okay. Only thing is, yes, it makes your bombs hard, and yes, it's good for your skin. It doesn't really do anything to the improvement or the um, performance of your bath bomb. Okay. It's good properties for your body and, and your tub and your skin and all that stuff. But it doesn't have the same characteristics as cream of tartar. That's not to say, hey, you guys, by all means, use this. I made a ton of bombs over here, which I will show you. Because way back when, this was my staple. Something's happened somewhere down the line. I don't know if it was oil switching or whatever, but I've had issues with clay. But we'll get to that too. Okay, now, if you want your bath bombs to bubble... So many options here. Everybody knows about SLSA. Good one, great one. Um, 
one of my favorite ingredients. Yes, you also use it in a bubble bar. What this is is your bubbling agent. This is what they call a primary surfactant, which is your primary bubbling agent, okay? It makes bubbles. It's in shampoo or a version of it, because um, some shampoos use SLS, some use SLES, um, there's other ones. Some use SCI, uh, it's sodium coical, I can't say the other part, but it's lysol 48 or whatever, I can't say it, it's CS, C, SCI. That's all I can say, because my brain is, like, sleeping. But this is your primary bubbling agent. But there's a lot of people who don't, I guess they don't understand SLSA, and unfortunately for a bubble bar, it's sort of, it's kind of got to be in there. At least something akin to this. But with a bath bomb, for those of you that don't, don't want to put the SLSA in, you use milk powder. And more, whereas, let's say this, okay, you're making a bath bomb and you want it to bubble and you're going to use the SLSA. You could use two, table, two, two tablespoons, four tablespoons. When it comes to the milk powder, um, it's, the amount is more. Good morning, guys. The amount is more. So it would be, uh, I have had good luck with at least a cup. Half a cup, it's okay if you add glycerin with it. And that's a tricky one because everybody knows that glycerin attracts moisture. Well, maybe not everyone knows. I'm telling you, glycerin is a humic, hum it draws moisture. <laughs> Humectant? <coughs> it draws moisture. So it's, you know, it's a tricky little thing, but it does work. So you could have your goat's milk, your coconut milk, your buttermilk, your skim milk. I've used plain old skin milk from the drugs or from the grocery store. You could use this as a nice foamer, but right now, don't think it's going to give you bubbles in the tub like an SLSA would or the SCI would. This just has the appearance of the nice foam on the water as it's activating, as the bomb's going off. It will not make your tub bubble afterwards, okay? Um, you can use castor, um, like pure liquid castor, ca castor oil as well if you wanted to, but remember it's wet. And that's, when you're working with bath bombs and ingredients that get set off by wetness, it's a very tricky thing how you do this. But like I said, experimenting is, that's how you guys learn. Okay, you may hear something and think, I gotta try that. Try it! You will never know. Don't always take what everybody says for it, because it might work for you. I found that to be my, uh, my thing sometimes. It doesn't work for everybody. So you find what works for you. But yes, this would be a nice foamer, but does not, com does not make bubbles, okay? It's just a foam on top. Um, it, its properties, well, besides the foaming, it's like Cleopatra Days. Milk baths are amazing for your skin, okay? The higher the fat count content, the better for your skin. Um, the only thing I found with buttermilk when you do it in a bomb is you get the globular, um, it's like a sludgy on top, but I mean, you mix it and whatever, and you'll have a bit of stuff on the bottom of your tub. Don't panic. It doesn't matter. It all washes away. Not a huge deal. So that's another, uh, another thing you can do for that foam type bubble ingredient thing. Okay. Now, uh, let me see. The other options I said was yes, milk and glycerin. Uh, there's probably more. It just hasn't come to me at the moment. I said castor soap, like pure liquid castile soap. Castile soap, sorry if I said that wrong. Um, another one you could do, and this is probably not for the newer people who have just started out making bath bombs, but you can use a secondary surfactant. A secondary surfactant is known as a bubble booster. It's what boosts your first bubble ingredient Sorry, that kind of freaked me out. It's, it's what boosts your first bubbling agent. So, um, cocoa betaine, or cocoa... Let's just get the word right, because you know I can't say it. And I found the difference between this, by the way. This is coke ah. See that on there? The other one is... Sorry, this is coke o. I can't show you here. See? Cocoa betaine, whatever. But the other version of this... There's an A here, not an O. That's the difference. That's the difference. And there's a difference in the how it's made, but that's the name difference, okay? Here, Coke, there. That that O is an A in the other version. People call them Coco B. There are two different kinds. But that that's a whole you know, neither here nor there right now. We're not talking about that. So then anyways, that's your secondary surfactant. It's very wet. Um, it has a tendency to set your bomb off. 
Um, can be done, for sure, can be done. Just make sure you use less oil, less spraying agent in your bomb. Um, in that case, I like to use decibel side. I've also used my DEA, which I know people have a big issue with this. Um, I really do like the way it works, I do. But this is mine. The old version I used to get was clear. It wasn't as cloudy. They've changed their formula. They've now got a warning on the back. But anyways, this is also a secondary bubble booster. Okay, it's a secondary surfactant. It boosts the bubbling effect of your first bubble agent, your SLSA, or whatever it is you chose to use. Not necessary in a bomb. You can get away with just the SLSA. All right. Other optional ingredients besides we got we, we've done the basics. Okay. Um, my brain just went for fart. <laughs> Other ingredients for a bath bomb besides what I have explained here or said to you today. You can add oatmeal. Good for your skin. Soft on whatever. You can add um, different clays. I think I said that already. So there's all different kinds of clay that you can add. You can use them for color. You can use them for the properties of the clay. I mean, there's lots of things you can add to your bomb. Oh, salt. Salt. Love salts. Used to use Epsom salts all the time. Can't use Epsom salts anymore for health reasons, okay? Uh, doesn't mean you guys can't, but use it sparingly. When you see recipes that call for cups of it, uh, uh, I don't suggest cups of it, okay? Like, again, I would not go more than a maximum of a quarter or a third cup, okay? I've seen recipes where it's right up to a cup, and I'm like, what, what are you guys doing? Like, holy, okay? Yeah, sure, your bombs rock hard. Enjoy that bomb there for you. But I said, to each his own. Don't, don't, I am not the god of bath bomb rules, okay? It's, I'm just telling you guys what I use, what I know what it does, like that. You can use, obviously we use oils, okay? Lighter the oil, the better. I think I already mentioned this, I just touched on the olive oil. Lighter the oil, the better. Um, for a few reasons. Uh, let's just talk about the tub. Do you want to get out of the bathtub and wipe out on your ass? No. Do you want a lawsuit? No. Your customers do not want to fall and wipe out on their ass. That's one reason for a um, why to use a lighter oil. Lighter oils and the proper amount leave you moisturized, but do not slick the tub. Okay? That's the last thing you want to... Yay, the dryer's done. That's the last thing you want to do is get out of your nice, relaxing bath when you're already tired and groggy in the first place. Go to step out and your one foot that's still in the tub kicks out from underneath you. Not good. Ask me how I know. <laughs> so anyways, no. Don't. If you're going to go heavy butter, be easy. And when I say heavy butter, that's your cocoa butters, your shea butters, your mango butters, your stuff that's solid at room temperature that you melt and it solidifies as it, you know, like it cools off. I can get into that way more. Um, personally, I have a couple different bombs when it comes to my major bombs. I do a butter bomb. Two different versions of a butter bomb. Um, I do a bath bomb creamer, and I do my bubble bomb, bubble bombs, and then I have other bombs in between, like milks and whatever. Um, lighter oil is good, and I know you're going to hear this whole big thing about using poly. I don't really know if I want to get into that that one right now today, but I will just tell you that that is an option. But I don't. Okay. So. You have, let's see, you have your main things to make your bombs go off. You have your clays or your cream of tartar. You have your extra stuff in there, which would be salts, whatever. Then you have your fragrance. Everybody has asked, I should stop saying everybody, right? I have had a ton of questions and a ton of people ask me, how much do you know how to scent a bath bomb? Like they've got suggested, recommended, suggested amounts. Um, every supplier, okay, we got a... Nature's Garden, we've got a Zen. Shit, we've got coffee all over the freaking place. <laughs> Next one, Tammy. Um, see, I need to drink that and not wear it. We have, here we go, here's Indigo, and say New Directions. There you go. Well, I can't give you a straight answer how much is too much. Each one of these places has a different amount recommended by their manufacturer. Okay, for instance, this thing is strong. I... When I put my fragrances in a bath bomb, I use my nose first. Um, as I'm putting it in, I always start with three mils. That's my one pipette. I put it in. It's a smell thing. One thing I would like to remind you guys of is 
a bath bomb is, let's say, this is an example. This is a bath bomb for your bath, okay? Let's say it's superly, superly heavily scented. Like, to the point where you're like, wow, man, that's strong. Think of it this way. This little thing is going into how many gallons of water? This little bath bomb, you want to not only scent the water during the whole time of the person's bath, you want, a lot of customers I found want, to have that smell on their skin as they leave, once their bath is done. It's like when you wash yourself with soap, you want to smell that nice, smelly, fresh smell of soap on your skin. You can overscent these. The reason why you can overscent them, and I don't mean crazy overscent, like don't dump have a bottle in the batch, okay? But the reason you overscent these and can overscent these is because they are a wash-off product. Um, it's not something that you're going to like rub into your skin like a lotion that's going to stay on you. You're in this, it gets rinsed off. It's also very diluted into the, all that water that's in the tub. So don't panic as much as a lot of you guys are, okay? Um, I get that. Some people have skin sensitivities. So you have to kind of, like, try not to go over. They give you a recommended dose, okay? And they give it to you for um, lotions, shampoo, um, wash off, stuff like that. Soap. Like, you can heavily scent soap, too. It gets washed off your body. It's not soaking in, okay? Mind you... You don't want to add so much that when this person's sitting in the bath, they're sitting there being itchy or anything like that. That's what I'm talking about. Use your nose. Think of the big picture. It's a gigantic bucket. It gets diluted. It gets washed off. Think like that. But know your ingredient or know your fragrances and your company's manufacturer recommended, okay? It's just something to go, to go by. But you'll know. I mean, you're going to test your bombs. You don't make a bomb, package them up, and give them away to people without testing them. And when I say testing them, it doesn't just mean throwing them in a sink. That's a good way to test them, sure. But it, the best way to test it is to jump in the tub yourself. Not only to see how it works and acts and whatever, but get in there. What does it do to your skin? What does the tub feel like? Um, is there stuff stuck to the tub? Is it stuck to your body? Do you have... You know what I mean? That is how you test it. Also, test the integrity of your, your product after. These things, my friends, have been around since 2012. Okay, or two end of 2012, early 13. These were my bath bomb. Here's the original label. These are my bath bomb creamers. And it says right on here. It's on, this is when I had my old little weird Lego and everything, okay? Uh, this is a uh, butter bath bomb creamer. This is, believe it or not, a mica bomb. And yes, it faded. Uh, when this gets dropped in the tub, the color is intense. And I like it. These two here both. Are mica and they're butter bombs never had them stick to the side of the tub okay but these ones get i add natural sorb to this batch but that's a clay so anyways we're not getting into that that's a whole other thing if you guys want to talk about a specific recipe we'll do that but anyways don't be so scared with the fragrance factor okay use your nose first your nose is your best friend secondly um it's visual obviously check the tub for gookiness and whatever but it's you need you need to get your body in that tub and have a bath. Don't just peel it with your hands and say, what's oh, soft, it's nice, whatever. Sure, that's a good good sign. When I test them in the sink, obviously I'm not jumping in the sink. But I'm feeling it on my hand and whatever. And it's usually half a bomb, a part of a bomb, a small bomb. I still go have a bath. Even if you guys don't see that demo, I still have a bath. Or my son will have the bath or however it works. It gets tested because, uh, and my kid, Shane's got the worst sensitive skin, so he's a good, you know, and Liam, same with Liam too. So yes, do all that. Test them as if you're buying from someone else. Forget they're your own for a minute. How do you feel about that bomb? How's it look? How's it feel? That's the big one. How's it feel? How's it smell? How's your body feel after? Remember that. So people, don't panic so much, okay? That's just, you know, take my advice, don't take my advice. I'm just, this was asked, I'm offering, it's totally, totally up to you guys if you listen or not. <laughs> so, like I said, I am not the, uh, you know, I make no rules. Um, what was the other one? Different colors, well, that's up to you guys. Like I said, I've used mica, I use lakes, I use liquid labs, I use water-soluble dyes, um, in the olden days I used, um, um, uh, food coloring for myself because I was testing them anyways, but yes, we know that that's not a, uh, uh, that's a no-no. Um, yeah, there's lots of things to color with, natural spices, whatever. 
Okay, now to cut that one short, because I ramble too much like you guys know I do, and I haven't even had full coffees yet. Um, other thing besides fragrance and color, obviously, you need to stick together. And also, yeah, stick together. Let's just stick with that. It's to stick together. So, you can use water. People do use water. Problem with water? What does water do to a bath bomb? It activates it. So, I've always been very, very adamant about using a very high percentage. If you go back to my older videos, I've been adamant about using a high percentage of rubbing alcohol. I have since leaned a little differently than that, okay? My ideal scenario, if you're going to use a higher percentage of alcohol, be it 91, 99, when I say high, mine are 99, so maybe 91 is not as bad. But whenever I use a 99%, I use my Witch Hazel as well. The reason I use Witch Hazel is, yes, it binds good too, but I like the properties that Witch Hazel has on your skin. Anybody who doesn't know anything about Witch Hazel, Google it. Any of these ingredients I've mentioned, guys, Google it. And I'm not saying that to be an ass. I'm telling it so that you guys can sink it into your brain so you know, oh, that's why, that's what that does. I should try that and this and that, whatever, and other ingredients and other products, okay? So, I like the properties of Pure Witch Hazel. What I don't like is if I use Pure Witch Hazel on a bath bomb, the bomb becomes powdery. Aesthetically pleasing, not. Not at all. To use, it's okay. I don't mind. But selling, people like a hard... They're used to Lush, okay? Lush has these hard, chalky... Not really powdery, but they're hard, chalky-type bombs. Um, now I use 70%. I have 50%. If I use 50%, I don't even touch the hazel other than maybe, like, two sprays max, okay? My pretty much go-to, though, for the most part, is my 70%. Uh, I will still use my witch hazel here to, um, to mix with my, my water soluble dyes because it does need a water to change the color to make the, the color pop. You don't have to. That's another story we'll talk about later. But that's what, another reason to use it, okay? But you can choose to just use your alcohol. You guys can choose to do whatever. Um, if you're using a melted butter that's solid at room temperature, Sometimes you don't need the oven to spray anything. Me, personally, I like to have a little tiny bit of alcohol in there to give me that nice, smooth texture. That's just me. Um, that's pretty much it. As far as the bubble bar goes, same scenario. Uh, the only difference with the bubble bar, if you guys are making your own recipe, you're not going to have the same amount of quantity of, as citric acid because you do not want your bomb or your, your bubble bar to fizz unless you do but usually you want it to be a solid thing that crumbles okay so it's basically all the same ingredients i have been known to put a pinch or two of citric acid in there it's a hardener has some other properties but like i said i don't want to get into to recipes and formulating and all that right now um but it's basically the same ingredients minus your big bulk of citric acid you know your bubble agents your slsa makes the bubble the secondary surfactant, be it cocoa betaine, laurel betaine, um, decel, glucoside, any other gl glucoside, whatever you choose to use as your secondary surfactant. And by the way, Bubble Up from Wholesale Supplies Plus is cocoa B, in case anybody wants to know. Um, yeah, that it's good to have the secondary booster. For one, it's your wedding agent in a, in a bubble bar. Two, it helps bubble boost. Exactly what it does. It gives your bubbles that staying powder. They're fluffier. They last longer. If they go away, you're on the water, they come back. It's just one of those things, okay? Um, yeah, I don't really know how much to go... If anybody has questions, ask me, but... I know there's a big, huge thing with that whole mica thing, and I, I, I bite my tongue. Every time I see a post about, um, you gotta use poly 80. See, I didn't want to bring up the poly, but I have it here, and I did the experiments and whatever, but uh, anybody that knows me, I have been doing bombs a long time. There was no poly, I shouldn't say there wasn't any poly 80. Poly 80 and stuff, I'm sure, poly sorbate, it was out because it was for um, perfumes and sprays and shampoos and shit, that's the school. Can you guys hold while I answer the phone? It's, I'm sorry, I hate doing this, but I'll be right back here. Have a boo at my balls. I'll be back. I have to answer the phone. Watch me get there. I'm not going to make it.
Shane is at the school hall. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Oh, for God's sake. Sorry guys, I can't move fast enough to grab my phone. Shaney is asleep on the couch, so much for going to school today, again, he missed yesterday. And I can't tell who it was, and I don't like answering the phone anyway, but I got it in case they call. Sorry, what was I saying? About, oh yeah, I've been making these for a super, super long time. And this is before I had, I mean, I for my ingredients, I'll give you an example of how I used to do ingredients, okay? You guys know, if anybody has any questions about proper labeling, you can find it on your, um, like your, uh, I'm out of breath. Um, for us, it's Health Canada. Um, F FD, I can't think right now. You know what I mean? Where you look to get your proper rules and regulations and all that stuff, labeling laws. Blah, 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 blah. I'm sorry, I'm out of breath. But this is how I used to. <laughs> used to do ingredients. Well, first of all, I'll read this one because I made these little band things. I don't know, whatever. This, yeah, it's a mica bomb. I remember making it. You can see the color changing on my shrink wrap and everything. These were some cheap eBay bags, but they they didn't didn't work too shabby. And it's not even soft yet. Wow, that's amazing. Anyways, for example here, my ingredients. This is how I did it. Um, baking soda. I didn't even do it in order, but baking soda, corn, starch. Actually, I might have. I might have used a lot of soda back then. Um, baking soda, corn, starch, citric acid, natural colorant, essential oils, and or fragrance. Um, Epsom slash sea salt, natural butters and oils. And then I just put discontinue use if rasher, rasher di discomfort appear. Use caution when getting up from the bath. That's how I used to do my labels. Then the next set of labels, this is even funnier. Because this is how you're not supposed to do it. This says, ingredients for bath busy. Citric acid. Uh, I don't know why I put baking soda in brackets, but it's got... I'll just read it. Citric acid, baking soda, SLSA from coconut oil, cornstarch, cocoa butter, sorry, cocoa seed butter, apricot kernel oil, Kaolin clay, witch hazel, mica, titanium dioxide, and fragrance. Uh, the reason the titanium dioxide, actually that wasn't that too bad. The reason, I just, I don't like when I have like and or, because usually it says can contain and or, like salt and or, Epsons or whatever. I don't really think you're supposed to do that. I've done it, like if it's got candies, that I put may contain candy uh, decorations and or whatever, but usually with your ingredients, or not usually, with your ingredients, you have to be adamant what's in, in this, like, oh, it might have coconut oil, or it might have, you have to say what's in it. There's none of this if and or maybes, it's got to be what it is. But, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the titanium dioxide, um, in the micas, it's part of the colorant, which I started getting onto the idea of, yes, you have to put all ingredients. So when you have your micas, you look at what your micas are mixed with, and it'll say titanium dioxide or whatever they're mixed with, unless you get a pure mineral mica, that's pretty much mica, but most of the time they're with TD and something else. I don't know if you can see the color of this. This is blue. Um, yes, this is blue and white. Waterfall mist. I still love these. It's a butter bomb. These things foamed like there was no freaking tomorrow. I think I literally used about a half a cup of SLSA when I was making these. I love them. Uh, this one, even though, yeah, same sort of deal, same recipe, different fragrance. Look at, even though it's even open right here, it's still hard. And I'm talking, this is like December or whatever. It's on my web, it's on my Facebook page. This, this is an old bomb. I'm talking old bomb. Um, Monkey Fart, when it first came out, and I don't even remember where I got it from. I think it was from Nature's Garden, to be honest with you. Um, believe it or not, this is pink and yellow. Doesn't look like it, 
but it's pink and yellow. And I love these because they were sort of what I like to call magic bombs back then. Because you don't see the mica colors in them. And there's no embeds or anything in these things. When you used to plop these puppies in the water, the color would come out. And that's what I love the most. It's like, oh, they get wet. So I didn't use a lot of um, a bind, like a spraying agent so that the colors would get brighter. If you've noticed when you put mica in your bath bomb mix as you're spraying with alcohol or whatever, that's when it gets a bit darker. Because these were butter bombs, I didn't spray them. Um, yeah, it's pretty funny how they work. Well, uh, we're going to talk about that recipe a little later with the magic bombs, but I'm not doing that right now. But, yeah, the whole poly 80 thing, I don't. I've done a few embeds with it. I told you guys that. I did the bombs. I tested them. Whatever. Nice little ingredient right there. Uh, if you don't have natural sorb, by all means, you can use some kaolin clay. It holds fragrance. It sucks up oils. The whole nine yards. Like I said, test your stuff out. Figure it out. Play with it. That was my gloves and everything. So, yeah, it's not... If there's any ingredient or anything you guys don't... Like, check out everybody's recipes if you can. Or not, I say everybody's. The free ones. Go for the free ones online first. See what these people are using. If they show pictures, that's awesome. Check out their pictures. And if you want to, try the recipe. That's all I can say. Try the recipe. But some of you will have the luck of getting the first time, first try. It'll be great. You cannot guarantee that. It, it takes a while. I mean, if you had a mold like this, you're laughing. But a bomb is not as easy as people make it out to be. That's what I want to... I can't reiterate that enough, okay? If you're having issues with your bombs, don't give up. Please don't give up. If I gave up, you guys would have never seen me other than my makeup channel. These puppies took me... Well, my round ones took me a while. I, I changed my styles and whatever, but some people it comes easier than others. That's sort of what I'm trying to say. But if it doesn't come to you right away, don't give up, okay? I don't want you guys to give up. Is that a heart or a broken heart, Damie? I'm sorry, I'm looking at your comments now. And I know that I have talked on this video way too long. I only pretty much touched on... Um, little bit of ingredients if there's anything that you guys want me to do for other video ideas it's just i was asked this one quite a few times and i wasn't sure if i actually understood how the question went it was i know i make bath bombs or how to go something to do with um can you do a video about making a or making a video on ingredients that go in your bomb not how much but what so, I didn't get a reply back to that, but I can only assume that they meant by what and why you use it. So, that's what I was kind of trying to touch on today. Um, oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, like I said, I was trying to answer that question. Um, I'm sure I miss a lot. Like I said, I've got a lot of my brain... Not feeling 100% um, for a few reasons. Um, trying to think. Well, yeah, I could tell you why, but I'm not. That's more of a personal note. We'll do that another day. <laughs> you guys have seen all these. These are all the salts I did in that one video. Love them. They work great. Colors didn't fade, and they didn't wash off, in case anybody's wondering. They don't come unstuck to your, uh, I mean, a little bit, but your salts will not come off. The micas will not come off the salts, is what I'm trying to say. So, you're okay, you don't have to worry about that. Because I was asked that, too. Um, yeah, if there's any other questions or whatever, I guess just leave them in the comments on on YouTube, because I won't see them here once this starts. Well, it's uploading now, but once I'm done here being live, uh, I won't see the comments until they're on YouTube. So, hopefully I covered that everything that was asked of me. Um, I can't really say for sure. I don't know if you guys know what I turned the beep off. That beep, beep, beep. You guys are all bugging about, what's that beeping noise in the background? I actually went and shut it off. I don't have to worry about the sump pump at the moment. It's not raining or anything. Mind you, we had snow a couple mornings ago, but it, it was sort of there, coated, and then gone. Um, but yeah, I'll turn it back on after the video. I just thought I would do that. And I'm sorry about the phone interruption. I still don't know who that was. But it's all right. Anyhow, like I said on that note, I'm going to suck back my coffee. I'm going to go chillax, and I might even go back to bed, even though I have so much to do. Actually, I probably won't go back to bed. I might come back on later with another video. 
an actual making video. We'll see how it goes, okay? Um, but thanks for sticking around and watching what, you know, rambles come out of my app. <laughs> Albeit helpful or not, I don't know. Hopefully I help somebody. And like I said, if you still have questions, feel free to message me and whatnot, okay? Um, like that. I'm going to go have a nasty cigarette like I ain't supposed to, but I have to. And I'm trying to quit, and I've been doing pretty good. Partly probably why I feel like crap. But I have a coffee here, and it sort of goes hand in hand. But we're trying to quit that. I don't like the stains it gives you on your fingers. And them whole other things of whatever. But anyways, totally different topic. We're going to be done now. Um, I'm off. I will talk to you guys in the next video. And like that. Have a good day, guys. Take her easy. Talk to you later.